Alrighty guys, hey, so we are gonna start talking today about forensics and hair. And in order to talk about how we analyze hair in a forensic context, we have to talk a little bit about what we can learn from it and something about hair's structure, how it grows, because you're gonna to need to be able to recognize those features later on. Alrighty, so human hair is one of the most frequently found pieces of evidence at the scene of violent crimes. It can provide a link between the criminal and the act itself. Now, what are some specific things we can learn from hair? Well, from hair, one can determine if it's human or animal, the race of the individual it came from, its origin, the manner in which the hair was removed, meaning was it torn, was it cut, was it burned, um, if the hair has been treated in any way, um, meaning has it been processed, and if that person potentially has either taken drugs or been poisoned over a long period of time. That can also be uh, discovered by examining the hair chemically. All right, so let's talk a little bit about hair in general and its DNA. People think that hair is an awesome source of DNA and the hair shaft itself contains abundant mitochondrial DNA. Now this is inherited only from our mothers, remember? And it can be typed by comparing relatives of the individual if no DNA from the body is available. And this has been referenced a couple times in different case studies we've watched um, on forensic files in class. Now, only the root of the hair contains nuclear DNA. And in order to get the root of a hair, that hair has to be removed forcibly, meaning you have to actually like tear that hair out of somebody's head. If hair is just cut, you won't get the root of the hair and all you'll have is mitochondrial DNA. Let's talk a little bit about hair morphology or hair anatomy. Okay, so there's a few things you need to understand about the way that hair grows. Okay, so the shaft of the hair is the part of the hair that sticks out of the skin. All this that you can see, this, I don't know, quarantine mess I've got going on. That's all the shaft of my hair. It's outside the skin itself. All right. Now underneath the skin, below the epidermis, that layer of skin you can see, is the root of the hair. Now the root of, hair of the hair extends down into the dermis of the skin. And that's why when you yank a hair out, it actually really hurts because that root is connected to muscles and to nerve endings, and it has its own blood supply. And that entire part of the root that the root grows in where the nerves and the blood supply nourish the hair, that's known as the follicle. And that's the structure from which the hair itself grows. Alrighty, so that's your basic hair morphology. Shaft of the hair, root of the hair, follicle from which the hair grows. Now let's talk a little bit more about, you know, the hair shaft, the part you can see. It's made up of three separate parts. The cuticle is the first part. Now that's the outside layer of the hair. It is an outside covering. It is made of overlapping scales. They almost look like the scales on a snake on human hair. The cortex is an inner layer of the hair. It's made of keratin, which is a type of flattened and um, strand shaped protein. It's also embedded with the pigments from the hair and it contains tiny little air sacs called cortical fuci that we'll be talking about later on. The innermost part of the hair is the medulla. Now this is not like the medulla oblongata of your brain, okay? This is an inner layer of the hair. It runs down the center of the cortex and it's actually mainly made up of empty space. We're gonna be going into a lot more detail about these three parts of the hair later on, but this will serve us for right now. Now, let's talk a little bit more about the hair cuticle because that's the part of the hair that you can actually see when you look at someone's hair. So the cuticle is once again our outermost layer of hair and it's covered with these tiny scales. The scales always point down toward the tip of the hair. So if you think about the hair growing out from your head, the scales are overlapping so that the free ends of those scales point toward the tip of the hair, like the shingles on a roof. And the reason for that is pretty simple. It 
promotes water and oil to flow away from the skin and down the shaft of the hair itself. This keeps um, oils distributed along the hair, but it also keeps moisture from laying against the skin, which could cause um, problems in terms of infection, which would be awful. Okay, now the scale arrangement is different in different species of animals. And the names of these scale patterns are based on their appearance. And we're gonna look at some of these scale patterns now. You'll find these diagrams that we're going to look at here in your notes. So, um, the names include the following, mosaic, pectinate, imbricate, petal, diamond petal, and chevron. Okay, so these are your main scale patterns, mosaic, pectinate, imbricate, petal, diamond petal, and chevron. And we're gonna go through how you can recognize each of these on a microscopically enlarged hair. So let's take a look at these two patterns. This is mosaic and chevron, and you're gonna label these into your notes. A mosaic hair pattern is, uh, it almost looks like mosaic tiles laid on a floor. A chevron hair pattern has more of a, let's see if I can get this to work for us. Okay, a chevron hair pattern has these kind of V shapes in the scales. Mosaic, the scales are more rounded and flat. Pectinate can be recognized by the scales are very thin and pointy, okay? And I wanna just go back, contrast that with chevron, they're a little wider. Imbricate, on the other hand, has very flattened and irregular shapes in the scales. This is like if you took mosaic, which I'm gonna go back to here and made those scales smaller. Just so you know, all humans have an imbricate hair pattern. Then we have petal. Petal is kind of like if you took pectinate and blew it up and made it a little bit bigger. And then diamond petal literally looks like snake skin to me or alligator skin. It's these large diamond shaped well, petals. Okay. So Human scales on human hairs, once again, have an imbricate hair pattern. So in order to visualize the scales, we have to actually do a little bit of a weird lab technique. If you take a slide, a microscope slide, meant for a microscope made out of glass, it's clear, and you put a resin on it, or I'll tell you what works great, clear nail polish, and you lay a hair down on it, okay, and once the, um, polish is almost dry, you lift that hair off of the slide, you will see an imprint, a perfect imprint of the scales. Now, what pattern do we have here? A moment ago, I told you all humans have this scale pattern. What is it? Well, this one would definitely be imbricate. Okay, that would be an imbricate scale pattern. Let's look at these two and try them out. What scale pattern do we have here on our first pattern? Right, well, that one would be pectinate. What about this one? This one could be mosaic or it could be imbricate. Now that top hair is from a mink. The bottom one, it's from a human. So that would be an imbricate pattern. Now, what type of pattern would this one be? Well, that one is also going to be imbricate. Alrighty. In our next video, we're going to start talking about the cortex and the medulla and how they function with the hair and how they can help us identify who a hair came from.